When we first moved here, we were a bit preoccupied with getting our infrastructure, uh, water, living arrangements, electricity, things like that set up. And we did try to set up a bit of a garden to have some things growing, at least uh, to try some things out. And it didn't really work at all. We tried to do a bit of lasagna style gardening, I guess you could call it, where we basically put down a layer of compost and then a layer of mulch. In this case, we used uh, hay. This is our brand new fancy chicken coop that I just built a couple days ago. Um, until now, we have been free-ranging our chickens down a few terraces down but it doesn't really work super well and we realized that the chickens will be more of an asset if we use them to produce more compost uh, which is one of the first strategies we're going to implement to improve our garden for next year is creating as much compost as possible. The next drylands permaculture strategy we're going to be using heavily is mulch. Uh, primarily we're mulching up what they call gestas here, they call in the UK broom, which I believe is a nitrogen fixing plant. It's also considered invasive here and it's also a huge fire hazard. It, it, it burns like gasoline. So. It's a great mulch plant though, I think, I hope. And what the mulch does is it covers the soil and reduces evaporation. The big, big name of the game here is going to be reducing evaporation and building soil, putting, comp putting uh, carbon back into the soil. The next strategy we'll be implementing is straw bale planting. Um, I still have a bit of research to do to make sure we really optimize this 
strategy, but my understanding is that we will basically come winter, uh, it sh hopefully will be raining here for a few months quite heavily, and we'll also irrigate them and try to get them really soaked and add nitrogen, basically manure, uh, through here so that it starts decomposing and then basically dig out little areas uh, where the manure is and stuff and plant into that. So my hopes is that they will retain moisture extremely well and then over time as they break down in a few years they'll just be creating nice soil for us underneath. So the last main strategy we're going to be using is the deep bed method. You see I've started digging one here. Uh, there's one there that I dug and one behind you. Um, this one's still pretty shallow. I probably won't go much deeper because I'm starting to hit roots from this olive, olive tree here. But this one's about a meter deep. The other one's about a meter. And we'll probably do some over there that are even deeper, maybe maybe a meter and a half, maybe even as close to two meters as I can get. And basically, we'll fill it with this old rotten wood that came out of the barn and dirt as well and some green material, some manure and some compost, old compost that we've already made. Uh, so it's sort of like a compost pile with wood in it, old rotten wood, and hopefully this will create s sort of underground cistern for the water to, from the, from the winter to really get stuck in and uh, penetrate better into the earth below, and it'll also create uh, the soil will be much looser as opposed to, as you can see, it's basically cement here. So we're sort of using all of those methods together. There, this area between these beds and uh, there will be lots of mulch involved here. These straw bales are s sort of helping to block some of the wind. Wind is a, also a huge obstacle uh, in this area. In the summer it's very hot, dry, and windy, which really just causes a lot of evap evaporation. And uh, we'll have to put some shade cloth here in the short term. In the long term, we've got a few fruit trees planted, and I'll probably plant uh, maybe a mimosa here, which is a, bit, uh, a local leguminous tree that's nitrogen fixing. It's considered also invasive here. I think just because people don't manage their land, so it does tend to take over. But if it's managed, it'll be basically used as an alley crop to provide shade and to drop nitrogen and also fix nitrogen to, in the soil. Here you can see the difference between the dirt that we're working with up on our terraces. Very typical of Portuguese earth due to farming methods. And the compost we created this last year by basically throwing all of our food scraps into a pile of hay and letting the chickens peck through it and poop in there. As you can see, it's uh, quite different. It's full of life. You can see little bugs and things crawling around in there. Uh, it's light. Um, there's a lot of texture to it. It holds a lot of moisture and the smell is really how you know that it's good stuff because it smells like a f forest floor or like it just smells alive. It's a maybe an acquired taste but it's a really delicious smell. Okay.